Welcome back to my study and to Dongit's Model Railway. I'm currently stuck in dependency hell. Multi-level layouts have a problem where you need to finish the layer below before building the layer above, but where you have multiple gradients, things can get more complex than usual. What I want to do is lay the track across my lovely four-track lift-out bridge. This means I need to lay the roadbed on the north side of the room so the track has somewhere to go when it comes off the bridge. That requires fixing down the running surface over the workbench as the roadbed will span onto it. That means putting the first three supports under the rising gradient towards the terminus station. And that requires working out the exact height difference between the junction and the terminus, which requires building the flat part of the terminus. There's a few pieces that require precise angled cuts. A mitre saw which can be adjusted to cut at any angle is a very useful tool. For model railway use, one at the smaller end of the scale will handle all of the sizes of timber we typically use. The frame for the terminus is relatively straightforward, at least initially. This is a permanent layout, so I can attach stuff directly to the wall. I use a notched horizontal and screw it directly into the studding. Of course, I can't fix the running surface of the terminus board down because I haven't finished the track laying underneath it, which is what I was trying to do in the first place. But I can build it, measure the height, and pull the top back off later. While I'm cutting the station board out, have a look around the page for a subscribe button and a like button. If you're watching on YouTube, there's also a bell to set your notification settings. There is a filing cabinet here that I'm building around. In order to get the track bed as low as possible, I'm putting the baseboard surface directly on top of the cabinet. Had I have put a conventional 2x1 frame under the surface here, the gradient would have been too steep. The filing cabinet will effectively become a load-bearing part of the layout, supporting the front corner. I'll also hide a stiffening beam in what will become the platform surface, so even if I need to slide the filing cabinet out later temporarily, it's not just going to be unsupported ply in this corner. The other option I had was to shorten the terminus station, ending it before the filing cabinet. This would have meant shortening the trains by at least one if not two coaches in most cases. After this point, the supports get complicated, because there's not much of the lower frame to connect to. I've also made a mistake here. I put some wiring through the only bit of main board frame that I can actually connect to. Instead of doing what everyone is going to expect, and disconnecting the cables at one end, threading them all back through, and rerouting them away from the bit of wood I find I need, I'm going to be an absolute savage and just cut them. Don't worry though, I'll be back later to make this into a new location for electronics, because I will need some to drive the junction, which sits right above here, and that would require cutting all of these wires anyway. Keep an eye out for a video about that later on. I'm going to use the ply sandwich technique here to build the remaining supports. As I've got quite a few of these to build, and there's enough going on in this video already, I'll make a video going into more detail about these later on. Anyway, now I have this support made, I can measure the precise difference between these two levels. From there I can calculate both the precise gradient of the ramp and the heights of each of the supports. The precise numeric value of the gradient isn't actually as important as you think it is. What's most important is maintaining a smooth gradient all the way up. Having calculated the new heights, the design was off by 2mm at this point here. Had I just winged building this, there would have been a noticeable increase in gradient at this point, and it would have been steeper than necessary up here. My gradients are already at the steeper end of the scale of what's acceptable, so keeping it as smooth as possible also keeps it at the lowest it can be, which will be important in terms of maintaining haulage ability. Now I have the design sorted, I can move the cat out of his new hiding place, and then build the final part of the frame here. Again, I'm mounting it to the wall in convenient places. Once the frame is complete, this top can be secured down. I need a full scale plan for this entire side of the layout to plan out the roadbed. That's a lot of printing, cutting and sticking to create this. I only have an A4 printer. If you can get access to A3 or even bigger, then this gets a lot easier. Do check regularly that your lines are straight with a long ruler or other straight edge. It's easy to accidentally introduce a slight kink somewhere which will make things not tessellate properly. Now I have the plan, 
I can cut it to shape and use it as a template to cut sections of the closed cell foam I use as roadbed. I've covered what the foam is and how I glue it down in a previous video. As I'm doing a much bigger section here, I need a lot more improvised weights though. The glue is now dry and this part of the baseboard is ready for some track work to begin. I couldn't resist laying out these points temporarily to mock up the junction here. However, there's a few other problems I need to solve first. One, I just cut the main bus wire for the layout in half. I need to fix that because part of laying track is testing that things run over it and without power, that's not going to be possible. Two, the rest of the wood for the layout is currently occupying my living room and I'm under pressure to move that. So I should complete the rest of the uprights and surface before starting on the track laying here. See you next time up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.